in the chapters on transportation, infrastructure, and community facilities. We're committed to Flint enjoying a system of reliable and efficient infrastructure and multimodal transportation tailored to meet local needs. And we'll have a network of comprehensive community facilities provided in a coordinated and collaborative manner. We've also come out strong with some demonstration projects that are already underway to show that we're going to operate in a new paradigm with public works. Thanks to the CS Mott Foundation, an engineering study is underway to assess the best way to put South Saginaw Street on a road diet. That means reducing the space on the roadway for vehicular traffic, slowing cars down, making the corridor more accessible to pedestrians and bicyclists. This can also reduce the amount of roadway that we need to maintain long term. We want our transportation network to be safe for all people and all ages, and not just be surface road expressways for commuters coming in and out of the city at high speeds. Thanks to the Michigan Municipal League Place Plans Initiative, we're also designing a rails to trails project called the Grand Traverse Greenway. We had a packed room of participants in December, despite some terrible weather. The, this is an example of how valuable community engagement is. The work needs to be you know, owned by the community. And that's what's happening all across the city coming out of the Imagine Flint plan. These projects are clear signs under the objectives in the transportation section of the master plan that we're making progress. We also make a point in the master plan for a sustainable Flint of leveraging our natural resources, such as our lakes and rivers, and location in the Great Lakes Basin. There are a number of objectives related to the Flint River in the environmental features chapter, as well as the infrastructure chapter. For instance, objective five in the infrastructure chapter reads, expand opportunities for blue infrastructure. What does that look like? Well, today, if you drive over the Saginaw Street Bridge in downtown, you see the decrepit Hamilton Dam. This is a high-risk piece of infrastructure right in the middle of the U of M Flint campus and the last barrier to flooding downtown in heavy storms. So now with the comprehensive master plan and the Flint Watershed Coalition and other partners, we have a solution that works towards protecting the waterway, securing downtown, adding value to the U of M Flint campus, and creating access to the river for recreational purposes. See, this is a good example of a good plan, collaboration, and an investment, and the difference that this can make. You see, if, if the city were operating in a reactionary mode, we would spend a million dollars to drive in concrete pilings to secure the dam structure. We would have in downtown a new permanent structure that only looked to our past and to the failure of us to modernize. Instead of this, and consistent with these objectives for a healthy river and waterway, the city is committing to the first, hun first $1 million to the Flint River Restoration Initiative. And this funding pledge will be leveraged to generate over $3 million in additional investment so that we can have a series of cascades through downtown like many other cities have successfully done. This Flint River Restoration Initiative, it's about best practices, good planning, collaboration with partners. And this is the way that we're doing business now, and it's working. You know, the Flint River has helped sustain people in this area for eons. And I'm proud that we're becoming better stewards of this precious natural resource. I'm thankful to the hundreds of volunteers every year from the Flint River Watershed Coalition, the Friends of the Flint River Trail, and all the people who continue to work with us on preserving our part of pure Michigan through the Flint River Corridor Alliance. This includes the University Avenue Corridor with Kettering University and Atwood Stadium, and a number of the representatives 
of the Flint River and Corridor allies are here. So I'd like you to stand and please be recognized if you've helped support those efforts. Now another partnership around water that I want to recognize is the Karagnandi Water Authority or KWA. This regional entity has become a catalyst for communities along the I-69 corridor to come together and help each other. We each have unique assets from manufacturing to agriculture, urban environments to rural areas that add up to more than the sum of the parts and create new opportunities for economic development and trade and innovation. And KWA is also our future water supply. Straight from Lake Huron to the Flint Water Treatment Plant at Stewart and Dort Highway. The bond financing for the new pipeline is proceeding and the construction schedule is on time. It will take nearly three years to get the lake water flowing. In between, the city will leave the Detroit water system now that we have permission from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality to use the... Okay. We're going to use the river as a temporary primary water source over the next few years until the KWA pipeline can be completed. Now this will provide some significant savings to the city on the cost of water supply for future years. We have been honest that this may not mean lower bills, but rates will stabilize. I didn't even get a boo on that one. Uh, <laughs> So the results are that we're going to have a better capacity to manage our costs to residents and businesses going forward. And the preliminary results from the water rate study affirms these savings relative to the Detroit costs. So when finalized, this new data will be shared with the new City Council Public Works Committee and the public. The bottom line is that with the master plan, the combined capital improvement plan and local control, Flint will be able to maintain the water system better. And one of the ways we'll do this is beginning this spring, we'll be using treated water from the Flint River as our temporary primary water source. So in recent months and due to the eventual increase in use of our Flint water treatment plant, upgrades have been made to meet the standards of continuous operation. Instead of paying a bill to Detroit, we're investing in Flint's infrastructure and capacity in a more efficient manner. And the track record at the Flint water treatment plant is excellent. For many years, the river has actually been used as the backup water supply for Flint and Genesee County. And because of this, the center has been conducting quarterly water treatment to ensure that the water meets the stringent state and federal standards. So these treatments have been done as a test to ensure the plant's use as a temporary water supply should service from Detroit ever be interrupted. And each time these tests have been conducted, the water has passed the test. So later this spring, we will all be drinking pure Flint, Michigan, natural mineral water. <laughs> I'm going to tell you now, there's, there's a difference between river water and lake water due to the minerals that are found in the river water versus that of a large freshwater body like Lake Huron. So the new water will be properly treated, lightly fluorinated, and will taste a little different from the water from Lake Huron that came through Detroit. But pure Flint, Michigan natural mineral water is going to save us a lot of money <laughs> in the long term. And once this KWA pipeline is completed, the river will remain as our backup water source should the need ever arise. See, with a, a long-term plan in place, then every expenditure can meet a current need and also contribute to our future resilience. This is a landmark project which will assist the transition to a more sustainable Flint. 
I know today here we have a number of the leaders on the Flint Water Treatment Plant and the Carignani Water Authority, including the KWA CEO, Genesee County Drain Commissioner, Jeff Wright, other KWA trustees and city officials who have worked on this. Please rise and be recognized. See, the city's Department of Public Works that I've mentioned consists of utilities, transportation, sanitation, and facilities. And it's already working on a number of operational changes, too, because while being good stewards in the natural environment is, is part of our plan, we also know we need to save some money around here. So recently, the city of Flint successfully implemented and tested an automation process at the 3rd Avenue pump station facility. This has historically been continuously staffed 24-7, uh, costing approximately a half million dollars a year. We now have full remote control of all the pumping, screening, and control operations, reducing the cost by over $315,000 annually. At the pollution control facility, the sewer treatment plant, engineering plans are near complete that will eliminate the use of the incinerator and construction will begin later this year. And after completion will result in another half million dollar savings annually. So think of what we're going to accomplish over the next five years. Five million in savings from these two plant changes alone. We'll have control of our own lake water supply with a river backup. We'll have a more natural Flint River with better parks. Our roads will be safer and easier to maintain, and trails will connect the city. I can't wait to see this for myself. This is the new Flint that we've been working towards and what we all imagined during the planning process. Before I close, there's one more priority area that I need to address. It came up in every community planning session. Flint's governance. We have to make some changes. One of the most important objectives in the master plan for a sustainable Flint is objective nine in the infrastructure and community facilities chapter. It was placed here because it's importance related to the city's large financial commitments and utilities, but it applies across the board. And I quote, operate in an open and financially stable manner, including improving citizen access focusing on measurable results, improving the city's financial position, and eliminating accumulated deficits. So as much as we also need a strategic plan to guide our future budgets, we need to reform how we manage the city in a fundamental way. Previously, I've stood before you and called for the reducing mayoral appointees and council appointees, restructuring city functions to protect the general fund for public safety. This was more about making City Hall smaller. But upon further reflection, I see that smaller by itself isn't much of a solution. As I said, the state of the city of Flint is that we're getting smaller, but we're stronger and we're smarter. And this is what we need to do with our governance, too. Stronger and smarter. We need new proposals to ensure that five-year financial projections and accurate revenue estimates are used not as a matter of choice, but as a matter of law, in the Charter, in our ordinances. I believe we need to protect the professionalism of our top city officials in finance and administration so that once they are appointed, they can do their jobs in the public interest. The Blue Ribbon Governance Committee that myself and Councilman Nolden and other community members are participating in will be making some recommendations about how we can improve our governance. It's my hope that we'll have charter amendments on the ballot sometime this year so that we can prove that as a community we're prepared to make lasting changes for the better. There are actually a number of members of the Blue Ribbon Governance Committee who are here we're meeting about two times a month, and we'll soon be organizing some broader 
public input as we consider reform proposals. So I'd like to ask all the members who are here of the Governance Committee to please stand and be recognized for your time and commitment. It was the emergency manager, Darnell Early, who came up with the idea of the Governance Committee. And I applaud his willingness to engage the community and work with Council and me to get us to this transition as soon as possible. We're all more than ready to put these challenges behind us and to move forward. Mr. Early has a part to do. I have a part to do. Council President Kincaid has a part to do. Every council member has a part to do. And so do all of you. Here at City Hall, we have to work together to check off items on the transition management plan as quickly as we can in a responsible manner. Strategic plan, five-year forecast, two-year budget. I'm prepared to lead the city to home rule. And I need cooperation from the city council and the community. This is not about falling back. This has got to be about going forward. And yes, we will have to address a number of continuing difficult financial challenges that are still before us. The coming fiscal year 2015 budget will be challenging. And the current court order on health care reimbursements, the changes in personnel levels and services, those changes may not be over yet. The reality is that we need cost savings from health care in order to protect pensions and keep us on a path to solvency and stability. So I call on all parties to work together. Collaboration is critical in order for us to be successful. And we need citizens to be involved and informed. The next City Council Finance Committee meeting, I believe, is scheduled for Wednesday, March 12th, right here in the committee room. I'd like to ask you to attend, if you can, and let us know your ideas and strategy for moving forward. I need you to get involved in this process. It's going to be a very busy month and next three months up here on the third floor. Okay. Our new master plan for a sustainable Flint came out of the imagined Flint planning process. As the text in the plan states, and I quote, Imagine Flint was the result of thousands of people who dared to imagine a better Flint, who loved their city so much they took time to come together to discuss their ideas, voice their fears and concerns, and share their dreams and aspirations. With the knowledge that there is much more work to be done and the willingness to do it, the people of Flint have imagined a better life that they themselves can help create. This spirit of service and commitment to the common good is one of the distinguishing features of our community and indeed our country. We have proudly borne our burdens as we have worked for better solutions, often as volunteers, unpaid but passionate. Consider all the action steps that I've touched on today. And this is only a small fraction of the whole. As I've worked with you all and communities and groups across this city, I see a surge of service stepping up. I see an army assembling to work for change. I believe this is an exciting time to be here and be part of this transformation. More than 50 years ago, it was our new president, John F. Kennedy, who said it best in his first inauguration in 1961. And his words apply to our Flint community as well as to the United States at large. He said, I do not believe that any of us 
would exchange places with any other people. 